So The Secret of Mana Remake came out not too long ago, and spending any amount of time in the reviews in the Steam page will show you some interesting insight to the mixed rating that the game has gotten. It seems as though a majority of users sit at either one extreme or the other. My goal here is to give as unbiased a look at this game as possible, which I think I'm going to be able to do despite me being a pretty big fan of the original. But before getting into the meat of it, I will say that I do like the game, but it's incredibly hard to recommend, at least at its current asking price. And here's why. People who are in favor of the game seem to have an overwhelming ability to look past the game's flaws, which are quite a bit. And I do believe it's a case of rose-colored glasses that they are unable to remove. But also, those who are focusing on the bad aspects of, are so hung up on them that they can't see what the game has done well. So let's break down all the concerns and see what's on the table. A lot of people seem to take issue with the voice acting and the newly remade soundtrack, so let's uh, tackle that. Most people recommend swapping to the Japanese voiceovers and the original OST, and honestly, when I first started playing, I completely agreed. But after an hour or so, I swapped back to the English dubs and the new OST, and it really wasn't that bad. And I think I know the reason for that. The game definitely doesn't put its best foot forward when you first start off. The initial voice acting up to the point where you reach the town is definitely not great. In fact, it's kind of bad. And same for the music. The first few tracks you hear up to the point you get to POTUS Village were, were mediocre at best, but the POTUS Village theme itself is just bad. So again, users would just swap to the original OSD and leave it there. But here's the thing, it does get better. Both the voice acting and the OSD, I've come to believe are actually pretty good. Important characters were voiced well. Gemma, Sage Luca, Watts, Undine, Gnome. Mana grows ever weaker. That could explain how this child was able to take the sword from its place of rest. His actions caused the balance of mana in this area to shift. Beasts are now rampaging across the land again. All the voice acting is more than okay, it's pretty good. Same for the OST. Once you get out of POTUS Village, all the tracks seem pretty good, but most of the people are left with this bad first impression and won't give it another chance. I mean, and I don't blame them. This is entirely the game's fault. Now, onto the game's performance and gameplay. A lot of users mention graphical bugs and glitches, and I tried my best to find them or recreate them, and I couldn't find a single bug or glitch. So I don't know why some people are seeing them and some aren't, but because some people are, I can't pretend that they don't exist, just because I'm not seeing them. This does play into one of the reasons why I can't recommend the game. But the gameplay is a bit more cut and dry, despite there being a little confusion. Some people complain that there's bad hit detection, and I believe people are confusing hit detection with the damage buffering. In the original game, you could spend about four years <laughs> charging up a high level attack, unleashing onto a group of enemies, and nothing happens. No miss, no dodge animation from the enemy, just nothing. It, it, this was poor hit detection. The remake does not have this issue. In fact, the game had added a hit spark and a little sound effect that assures you that your hit has gone through. But also, like the original game, there's something similar to damage buffering. If an enemy takes damage, recoils, lay on the ground, and, and then eventually receives damage, that's all that enemy can do at that time. If another character hits that enemy while it's on the ground in that kind of stunned state, the damage won't register until that animation is complete, creating a sort of delay. And once you start using magic as well, this becomes even more apparent. And this is still present in the new version, but it, it's not poor hit detection. Actually, now you aren't locked into a four cardinal direction attack, like, you know, with uh, range, which is more apparent with like range weapon. Hitting things in the game is a lot easier now than it's ever been. That coupled with being able to map items, weapons, or spells to the bumpers as shortcuts, battle feels pretty good. 
I mean, it's still a slow paced battle system considering you have to wait for your action gauge to hit 100%. But honestly, that's just how the game is. But along with all the other bells and whistles, like a newly added mini map, which uses the game's original maps, it's really cool to see the original game, like, in the new one. Also, using the D-pad to swap between characters quickly has been really useful as well. I find myself in the remake swapping characters frequently depending on who's using what weapon. And ultimately, I think the battle system is either on par, if not better, than the original. Honestly, any issues that any negative review has mentioned, I could blow off if only the game had online. I'd consider the issues just kind of nitpicking, since I'd be able to play a childhood game in a more modern form alongside my friends. And this, this is the game's biggest flaw. And what's sad is the excuse the developers gave for this. And this was directly lifted from uh, Masura Oyamada, the producer of the game. He said, you have three players sitting next to each other on a couch with three controllers, all playing at the same time. I think a lot of the enjoyment that people have in their memories of the original game relies on that playstyle. We felt it was best to have that recreated in the same way. This is flawed on so many levels, the biggest of which is that having online wouldn't take away from those that would prefer to have the local co-op experience. It's no excuse not to include the feature. Especially with us gamers whose social circles exist entirely on the internet. Online is the only option we would have. And to turn a blind eye to this is selfish and lazy, to say the least. This is ultimately why I can't recommend the game, especially at $40. It's a huge disappointment and shows that the developers don't actually care about the players. And what's sad is that I do like the game. I want to recommend it, and I look forward to playing more of it, it's just that it could have been so much more. It's a situation where I'm more disappointed than mad. The only hope is that one day they might include an online multiplayer update, but I'm skeptical to say the least.